Nearly a dozen cars all broken into within a matter of weeks. Nothing like this has ever happened to us. Um, I was infuriated. Thieves seem to be targeting specific cars in Colorado. Is it coincidence or is it becoming a pattern? I don't want people to have to go through what we went through. And remembering a mother gone too soon as another driver speeds through downtown Denver. I thought she would have been the one to bury me, not the other way around. Switching back to orange as more counties loosen restrictions, some are getting pushed back as positivity rates keep going up. Also, Denver now re-exploring bringing alcohol to open areas downtown. It could help businesses rebound. I don't think it would hurt businesses. I think it would help businesses. But not everyone is on board. We want to make sure that it's working for neighbors also, not just for the, you know, bar owner. We're going 360 on common consumption. We begin with breaking news at 8. It looks like Governor Polis's phone calls to the MLB commissioner worked. Denver 7 has confirmed that Coors Field will be the official host of this year's All-Star Game. The MLB recently pulled the All-Star Game from Atlanta. Last week, Governor Polis, or Georgia's governor, rather, signed new voting laws into place that limit things like giving water to voters standing in lines. Today, Governor Polis said he was burning up the phones to the MLB to bring the game here in instead. An official announcement on the move isn't expected until tomorrow morning. We will of course bring you the latest tonight on Denver 7 News at 10 and tomorrow once the announcement comes in. Well, it's been a bad couple of weeks for Audi owners around Denver. Denver 7 found at least 10 Audis were broken into, one of them stolen. In all cases, the right window was knocked out and nothing was taken. Thank you for joining me on Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. One body shop owner contacted Denver 7 who doesn't think this is all a coincidence. Here's Denver 7's Gary Broad. It doesn't take much. And you just put this against the glass and when you push in on it, it snaps and it just shatters. And it doesn't take long. The car was gone. The car, the keys were still here. Aaron Marshall owns Berg Performance, a body shop specializing in Volkswagens, Porsches, and you guessed it, Audis. In the middle of the night and in the middle of the week in late March, this happened. They came in and took a, uh, a center punch and walked around the Q5 that was in our lot, broke the window, reached into the glove box, found a spare key, uh, took the car. The video shows the thieves taking off with one of their cars, then going around to the next Audi. The process appears to be the same. Break the window, try to see if there's a spare key, and if there is, steal the car. It seems like their only motive is to steal the car, and, and it's quick. You know, they went in, they break the window, they check if there's no key, you know, they either move on to the next one. Marshall has been working on Audis since he was 14. He says they are some of the most difficult cars to steal because of the technology. Problem is, there's a place for a valet key in the glove box. Marshall says sometimes your car dealer may place that extra key in the compartment. So while you may not know it's there, these thieves appear to know just where to look. Both the Denver Police Department and Adams County Sheriff's Office say they have not seen an uptick in targeted Audis, but we found out Berg Performance isn't the only one. Another body shop in Denver specializing in Audi repairs tells us off camera they had three break-ins also last week to Audis. Three more cars were in the shop for the same reason. The right window busted out, and in each case, nothing was stolen. The passenger side window was broken out. Nothing was taken. Randy Simon's car was in the shop at Berg Performance when the break-ins happened. Clicked in my mind that uh, my wife had mentioned that uh, uh, a neighbor of ours also, she had noticed, had had their Audi vandalized. Same thing, passenger side window had been broken out. Marsha believes it's too much of a coincidence and has a warning for his customers and any car owner who will listen. If you have a key in your glove box, take it out. There's no reason to have it. In Denver, Gary Broad, Denver 7. Tonight, we are learning more about Jessica Marie Allen. She is a mother who was killed over the weekend in downtown Denver after being T-boned by another driver. Denver police say that other driver was speeding. Her family says Jessica was delivering food Saturday night. Can't go to bed without seeing her. I'm not mad at the person that did it. I just wish they wouldn't have. The driver who hit her car, John Dahmer, was arrested that night. He is being charged with vehicular homicide. 
And a bizarre theft from this weekend. South Adams County firefighters rushing to help a patient say that same patient took off with their ride. They responded Sunday morning to the Mi Pueblo Market in Commerce City for a man complaining of breathing problems. Investigators say that same man, 41 year old Jeremy Brandon Chavez, then suddenly got into an unlocked fire command vehicle and drove off. Police were able to arrest him using stop sticks with minimal damage to the car. This is proof we're not out of the woods and tougher restrictions are always on the table. State health leaders tell Denver 7 Summit County will move back into level orange on the state's COVID-19 dial. The move will force businesses in the area to go back to 25% capacity. Pitkin County is the only other county in the state in orange restrictions. Summit County will officially move to the higher tier on Wednesday. COVID-19 cases are again climbing in Colorado. This weekend, the state's positivity rate went back up above 5%. That's the first time it's hit that mark since January. This happening just as Governor Jared Polis announced he will allow counties in level green to opt out of the statewide mask mandate. Jefferson County, which is in level blue, moved even further than that today by lifting mask requirements outdoors. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez spoke with state health officials about lifting restrictions this early and if it was the right call. After more than a year since the beginning of the pandemic, many people have felt fatigued by restrictions that have been put in place across Colorado. Still, public health experts from the federal to local level worry about loosening restrictions too soon. We are still in the middle of a serious outbreak. There are places across the country that are beginning to see surges that I think could be kind of cautionary tales for us. Over Easter weekend, Colorado's seven day average positivity rate rose to 5.11 percent. That's above the 5 percent threshold that hasn't been surpassed since late January. I'm working with local elected officials and other public health people across the metro area to say, look, if the governor is stepping back, is it appropriate for us to step up? What does that look like and when? This comes after Governor Polis extended the statewide mask mandate for 30 days. At the same time, he's given counties in level green of the state's dial the ability to loosen restrictions if they choose to do so. For now, the only counties in level green are rural areas in the state and make up a small population of Colorado. They still would have to mandate masks in places like schools, child care centers, as well as prisons, to name a few. For Denver's Mayor Hancock, He's not planning on moving back to normal too quickly. People who live, work and visit Denver should expect certain measures such as capacity limits and our mask order to remain in place until vaccination rates and case rates are where we need them to be. The light at the end of the tunnel is visible. As more people continue getting vaccinated, counties will have to decide how they move forward in a safe and effective way. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. One step to rebounding, getting vaccinations out quickly. And that's why FEMA is taking over the mass vaccination clinic at the Colorado State Fairgrounds in Pueblo. The official transition will happen next week. The goal is to increase the number of daily shots from 1,700 to 3,000 or even more. FEMA is launching help for similar vaccine sites in several other states. Also, Larimer County is looking for volunteers to help at the vaccination site at the ranch. Mostly, they need help with traffic control, greeting, observation, and some administrative assistance. Best part, if you complete two volunteering shifts, you can get a vaccine at the site. To help out, visit nocovolunteers.org. The federal government is tapping Johnson & Johnson to take over a Baltimore plant after 15 million doses of their vaccine were potentially contaminated. Those doses were produced by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, which is subcontracted by Johnson & Johnson. It is also the facility for AstraZeneca, whose vaccine is still awaiting FDA approval in the U.S. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services is ordering that the AstraZeneca vaccine production be moved to another plant. Rockies, Nuggets, Avalanche, all have finally welcomed back fans. I feel like we're all coming out of hibernation and we're alive again. Next in line, the Broncos, but those tickets won't be cheap. Temperatures are way up there again today, but a cold front means wind and snow.